Running a little bit late this this week on, on the fancy playlist of July 30th, 1989. Two more songs I want to talk about. One of them a top 40 extra, and I'll get to the number one song hopefully within the next night or two. And when I first started to count down this fancy playlist, among the top 40 extras right here, I was delighted to find a record I'd absolutely forgotten about. Dion, Dion DiMucci, one of the legendary early rock and rollers. And boy, rock and roll he did back in the day. And The Night Stood Still, which was a pretty solid rock and roll record. And it was off the album, Yo Frankie. Came out in 1989. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of, Hall of Fame in 1989. And uh, Yo Frankie, produced by Dave Edmonds. Dave Edmonds, best known in, in the States for his remake of Smiley Lewis's R&B hit. Back in, the R&B hit that went goes back to 1956. And uh, I Hear You Knocking, uh, uh, Dave Edmonds redid it in 1971. Massive hit here in the States back in 1971. Produced this album by uh, by Dion. He sings back up on this record too. And the night stood still. Patty Smythe of Scandal. She sings back up on this on this record too. Patty Smythe. A couple of uh, big artists who made an appearance on this album: Lou Reed and Paul Simon. Dion DiMucci. Oh yeah, boy, going back to those doo wop days of the late fifties. Uh, there was a. Uh, Back when they were, it was Dion and the Belmonts, his high school buddies, people who grew up in the same neighborhood. Dion and the Belmonts off the Lori record label. I wonder why back in 1958. And then they came out with a slow record called No One Knows. Now I wonder why. This is one of the impressive doo wop records of stores back in the, in the late 50s because it wasn't it wasn't a white bread record. This this song had some soul pumped into this record, pumped into the bloodstream of this and to the melody, to the singing of this record. Dion to Moochie, man, he, he could rock and roll back in the day, do a little bit of soul, too. And uh, that was in 1958, then 1959, Dion and the Belmonts, they really hit their stride big time. Where or when? Listen to the harmonizing on that record. Classic, prime classic. <laughs> Slow dancing record, where or when? Yes, dancing with your honey right there at the prom, high school prom. And there was a teenager in love. I'm sure you remember teenager in love. What it feels like or something to be a teenager in love back in 1959. Belmonts and Dion, they parted ways, although they did briefly get back together in 1966. But then Dion is a solo artist, the Wanderer, Run Around Sue in 1961, uh, co-written with Ernie Morasco. And uh, 1962, there was Lovers Who Wonder and Little Diane. Dion just a swagger, cocky, and his, some of his records like The Wanderer, a lot of confidence. He signed, he went from Lori to the Columbia Record Label in 1963. It might have been 1962. That, that was one hell of a mountain to surmount right there. Because, the, because Dion was one of the, if he wasn't the first to be signed to Columbia, a first rock and roll artist to be signed to Columbia. He was among the earliest rock and roll acts to be signed to Columbia because the head of Columbia, Mitch Miller, he hated rock and roll. Oh, God, he despised it like you wouldn't believe. And the hit records continued to flow from Dion. 1963, he redid Ruby Baby, done by the Drifters back in 1956. Yes. That might have been back when Clyde McFadder was still lead singer of the Drifters back back then, before he went solo doing Treasure of Love and Lover's Question. I'm getting carried away. And there was Donna, the Prima Donna, 1963. And uh, there was uh, Drift Drop. And yeah, sometimes he just laid smack down in his records, man. Dion, man. Later in the 60s, well, he had a drug problem, heroin, but he kicked it. He had sort of a spiritual rejuvenation of sorts in the late 60s, and he wanted to rejoin his old record label, Lori. But Lori had a condition. He can resign or get back on the Lori record label if he would do a song. It was written by a guy, I wrote his name down. I should have should remember his name. My Dick Holler, a song that was written by a guy named Dick Holler. He wrote the song Snoopy versus the Red Baron, which was a huge hit by the Royal Guardsmen in 1966. Well, anyway, Dick Holler wrote a song called Abraham, Martin, and John. 
you do this record, Dion, we'll put you back on the label. Went folksy. And then that was a massive hit around late 68, early 69. But man, I tell you, a really trip. You gotta listen to this. Dion, 1969, the runner up to Abraham, Martin, and John, lost 45, a collector's, a record collector's deal. Dion redid. You gotta listen to his version of Purple Haze. It is pastoral, laid back. It's, it's almost like a Muzak version of sorts. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It is one of the most interesting remakes you'll ever hear. Purple Haze by, by Dion, his version. His version went to number 63 on Billboard's Hot 100. Added it to one of my Spotify playlists uh, not too long ago. He covered a uh, song written by Joni Mitchell, both sides now. He covered that too. Went to number 91 on Billboard's Hot 100. And that, that, that's, you know, it, it happens, you know. Went, went a little bit folksy there. Both sides now. Dion covering that song, although Judy Collins got, was it? Yeah, it was Judy Collins who had the hit when it got. Her version was beautiful. But anyway, so that's uh, Dion. And I think I covered one other thing I want to mention. Oh, another favorite by Dion and the Belmonts of just Dion back in the day. The Kissing Game back in 1961. That was pretty cool, too. I didn't know this. I just found this out when I researched this record the other night. When I researched Dion the other night. And I'm going to try to put this as coherently as possible. Dion was part of the winter dance party. At least at one point. Dion and the Belmonts, of course, they had such momentum with, I wonder why, they toured. Apparently at one point they toured with Buddy Holly, the Big Bopper, and Richie Phelan's. Their tour bus broke down, and Buddy Holly asked Dion, would you like to take a small plane to the next gig? There was a cost. It would be $35, and Dion needed that to make rent on his parents' apartment, although there's a couple of stories about that, or his own apartment, but uh, $36 sounded, now you got to understand, $36 was a lot of money back in 1959. Well, not mega bucks, but that's probably the equivalent to, what, maybe 100 or 150 or $200 today. So $36 or $35, $36 was an indulgence for Dion. He passed. Didn't take the plane. And lo and behold, about day, well, next day, he heard about the plane crash. The day the music died. Buddy Holly, Richie Phelan's, and uh, the Big Bopper. Dead Gummit. How about that? Well, we got Dion as a top 40 extra on this fancy playlist, July 30th, 1989, and the night stood still.